Please join us on camera if you can. Welcome. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 If you're new to the room, Hi, all. at the bottom of the screen is a button called reactions and that has a hand raising feature. So we might go there later, but that's where it is. If you're looking for it, if you haven't seen it yet. Okay. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hello. We're just navigating a little beeping. <laughs> <laughs> so stand by. We are going to turn a few things off. Um, yep. Okay. So, welcome everyone. We are in uh, the second week of this theme <laughs> that we've selected for the entire month around uh, the nature of communication. And if you're kind of new to our Live in Loves, last week, um, hopefully you had a chance to to just listen to the replay, we, we brought in the topic of language around the nature of communication. And I mean, I think what we explored there is just a piece of what this ever continuing understanding of uh, the nature, the nature of communication, not just communication, but the, the nature of the various ways in which we come to know one another and our relationship to everything and everyone. And obviously we're always circling back to uh, the before beyond or the energy light and information uh, that that is the reconnective healing experience. Uh, so today we've created a, a, a topic around the theme that is going to help us explore earth, earth. And we just want you really quick, if we were to ask you the question around the nature of communication, what, what comes to you first when we refer to the activity or the experience of earth people or nature just one or the other i mean we understand that people and nature are one and the same but conceptually okay. what are you visualizing what are you Talking thinking about yeah. the nature of communication and we're we're really looking uh from the perspective or the activity of earth do we think of people or do we think of nature and i have one other question for you write down earth and below it write down nature and next to it i want you to select between these two choices. For you, 
when you think of earth, is it personal or impersonal? When you think of nature, is it personal or impersonal? And in looking at that, for me, I'm considering impersonal to mean universal, not cold and impersonal. <laughs> not rude. Not rude and personal, <laughs> but personal of the individual and impersonal meaning all encompassing everyone and everything. Okay. So we were just talking with our uh, life leaders around just before we started. The premise here on earth ultimately is that the human being is that which we owe everything to. We, really, we are here in a way as a collective experience. And the planet, uh, Cecilia, when we asked Cecilia, Cecilia said, I think when I think of Earth, I think of galaxies or uh, planets in this way. We, we have this sort of inverted understanding of where, where we live. And we are, um, I, we have someone in the background. Can you, yeah. We are learning in a way to inquire much more deeply about uh, the, our understanding of earth and is it a separate communication system does it have a different nature than the people who or the human beings that embody it and i and i mean that quite literally we are the embodiment of Earth. That's your computer. Do you want to just grab it? Oh. Yeah. Stand by. Right. We have a beeping. A beeping computer. We have a beeping computer. Yes. So this is a this is a sort of pivotal moment. Um, because it doesn't matter where you are in the world doesn't matter what country you live in. It doesn't matter what hemisphere that country is in. There are a series of um, activities and events in the last year that have called us as human beings, the embodiments uh, of earth to give great consideration uh, to the language or the communication. Cece, can you, is there a way for you to mute? Okay, we're, Anna is just done. And this will, this will not be a repurposed <laughs> live in love, technically. So, let's first just have a few of you put into the chat. Did, did we do that? For you, is Earth impersonal or personal? The Earth was here before us. Cease, can you read a few of those for me? Personal, Angela Capes, personal, personal. We have had um, several. We've got lots going, nature, 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 a huge being, how the planet fits together and all on, on it. Um, how the planet fits together and all on it, personal, personal, nature and earth are very personal, uh, impersonal. Uh, earth was here before us. Okay. I think of it as impersonal, but not separate. Okay. And are we speaking of personal as me being personal to us? Or are we thinking when we use the word personal as being mm -hmm. about an individual? versus the whole. So those are 
funny things about the terms impersonal having several meanings and personal having several meanings. So I, 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 really, I want to be careful we don't create a labyrinth here. We're, we're really right. attempting to keep something that is complex, simple. Mm -hmm. So let, let, let me propose that everything that is impersonal in a human being is sacred. And, and, and that alone, another way of putting this is that there is something absolutely sacred about every human being, something that goes beyond the personal circumstance in one person's life and or maybe the variety of different contingencies of their personalities. Or as Miriam says, personal from my personal experience. So we want to kind of explore a little bit together how, and in some ways, the reality that is outside. When we think of the world, we're going to call that earth, okay? But there is a reality that is outside the world and outside of humanity's understanding and efforts, right? We call that spirituality. <laughs> Something that lies outside in a way of any human personal condition. See now, uh, part of what I'm talking about um, when I bring this up is because I'm observing and reading the notes a bit of a blur between the way we're using these words. For example, Lexi wrote, it's personal and sacred to me. And um, so again, it's, it's another blur of the meaning. So I would use personal as not personal to me as an individual that's what personal is heart but it, it is so it can be personal and sacred to you and yet we're speaking about what is impersonal meaning universal as being a sacred that we recognize in everyone it's it's a fun exploration because just when you feel you got a grasp on it there's another little twist that comes up well the reason that we're looking at communication is because here on earth and your daily activities, we would say the principal needs of something personal for the human body, food, warmth, sleep, health, exercise, fresh air, that principal need of the soul needs to be met. But that that connects us all that attitude of where we place our attention is both developed from us and given to us from an external reality. Let's call that the nature of everything. We can't, in a way, by our own egoic behavioral personal efforts truly bring about universal good in the world as it is really beyond the world or any human faculty but we have this capacity to turn our attention in a direction a communication that reflects this impersonal connection we all share. And this attention at a higher level will say can be directed towards the impersonal, getting beyond ourselves breaking the habit of being ourself. You can, you can look at every spiritual practice or title, 
higher consciousness. These are not practices or themes directed at the evolution of something that we'll call personal, non-universal, but at our understanding or the communication of, again, the impersonal. And there is something that comes into play in this communication process when everything becomes so personal that it ignores the nature of the impersonal, the nature of that which connects all human beings, embodied beings on earth. And that is our ability to recognize I'm going to use the word suffering because that is the example that we've been sort of speaking into, but we're not using that idea from the perspective of a personal trauma. You could call it compassion if you wish, if that's a, if that is a better word for you because it feels more positive, but it is, you know, in a way it's not really the same. So the impersonal is the most intimate experience we have. You got it, Cease? The fact that we are aware and we talk about this often in, the, in, in, in our conversation, is the most ordinary, but often not the most obvious. So again, in the nature of communication on earth, as an earth being, the fact that you are aware is the most ordinary, but often not the most obvious, because most of us most of the time are accustomed to giving our attention to the content of our experience, thoughts and feelings and activities and relationships. And as Rupert Spear would say, there is rarely enough of a gap in between the objects of our experience for us to become aware of the simple fact that we are simply the very nature of experience itself. You know, on YouTube, um, Blanca Munoz says, we are one with all. The frequencies are impersonal. Reconnective healing is impersonal. We just observe, love, and experience. Beautiful. And Frank says, we are connected to nature. Oops. Just slid out of my vision a little bit. We are connected to nature through our organic and sacred aspect of the intelligence of pure consciousness. It is the process of personal reconnection. We are able to be in absolute consciousness and no longer relative consciousness. And and I love that. And I'm going to I'm going to stack that one more with one more idea. The very nature of paying attention to others in a way is something that we have the potential to do, but not something that comes naturally to us. It needs to be trained and developed. Think about that. I'm so glad I got a nod from Katarina because I always look at her because she is my resident psychologist. (laughs) Paying attention to others in a way is something that we have the embodied potential to do, but not 
something that comes naturally. It needs to be trained and developed. So if we walk that in the other direction, what is it? If we concentrate our attention on trying to solve a problem, no, I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna say it this way. Attention is not as active a process as it might first appear. Attention is less like the active straining to solve a problem and instead more of a sustained passive state where we are attentive to what the conditions are in order to solve the problem. It's the suspension of thought, leaving it detached, empty, and ready to be penetrated by the object. That is what attention is. We hold this knowledge. Let's just repeat this idea. Attention consists of suspending our thinking, leaving it detached, empty, and ready to be penetrated by an object. So here, everything about earth, nature, without the activity of thinking is impersonal. It's how we know each other. Which does include, of course, also um, the trees, the water, the rocks, the flowers, and everything else. So um, we can feel personally that it's communicating with us, yet we want to step back and recognize that the overall communication is actually impersonal, more global or universal, or another word that carries that with it. By the way, speaking of words, um, we want to say thank you to all of the YouTubers who have been listening with us. Um, please feel free to come. Um, we encourage you to come join us in the RLC, the Reconnective Life Community. So you can continue in these conversations with us. And if you look to the link below, you'll also see that the first hour of our online program, the portal is free to you. So hopefully we'll see some of you even click in the RLC and become a part of us and continue with us today. Um, if not, then next week. Thank you. So here we gather as people, humans, being something on earth, right? We have this nature that actually doesn't even allow us to perceive our actual experience, right? We, we know that we are attached to a planet that is spinning. To be outside of a planet that is spinning, like that ride as a kid that you would go on and it would spin so fast and the floor would drop out and you'd be stuck to the wall. Did you ever do that at an amusement park? That's us, yes, G.D. Butler, right. Hi, I'm Eric Pearl and we have launched an online course called The Portal. It's an expansion of our online essentials, our level one, an eight plus hour e-learning course. And we decided to add content because our students were asking for more. What is a portal? It's a doorway to transformation. It includes the eight hours of the online essentials course. Two key chapters, one on love and one on healing and workbooks 
from our worthiness episode from the series The Inner Compass. More than 10 hours of content. The portal helps us discover our roadblocks that may be stopping us from living our fullest potential. How does the portal help bring about these benefits? Easy to follow short segments with interactive exercises. Information acquired not only through the mind, but through interaction with the frequencies themselves. Effortless learning and personal evolution. It brings the possibility for instant transformation, healing, and the evolution of each and every one of us in our everyday lives.